Welcome to the final episode of Tech Chop. This episode of Tech Chop is brought to you by GoToMeeting. Welcome to episode 65 of Tech Chop. I, of course, am Paul Bauer, a.k.a. Twitter.com slash Pablo. Yes, as I mentioned a few weeks ago, this will be the final episode of Tech Chop. I just don't have the time or the passion to keep making these videos every week. Don't worry, though. I'm not disappearing off the face of the planet. You'll still be able to see what I'm up to on my tech blog, BauerPower.net, and my political blog, MainWatch.com. Those aren't going anywhere for the time being. So with that out of the way, let's get into what this episode's all about. Today I'll be showing you how to set up your very own email server in Ubuntu Linux in about 10 minutes using iRedmail. The reason why you might want to do this is to get yourself off of the free email providers like Gmail, Yahoo, or Hotmail, since news of the NSA's PRISM program shows that the government pretty much has a direct line into your mailboxes. Even if they didn't, when you host your mail on a third-party provider, the government doesn't need a warrant to access your email. All they need is a national security letter, and they don't even have to notify you. If you host your own email, they, at the very least, will have to serve you a warrant to access your data. That is, if our government wants to follow the Constitution, which they seem to have no problem violating on a daily basis. iRedmail is a free and open source package for Linux that combines PostFix, SpamAssassin, ClamAV, DoveCot, RoundCube, and some others to make it pretty simple to use yet secure email server. And I'll show you how easy it is to install right after this. Summer's almost here. Weather's great, kids are getting out of school, so many places you'd rather be. But even though you don't want to be at work, business doesn't stop. Good news, you can escape the office and still stay connected to your coworkers and clients. You can share ideas, problem solve, get things done. Just use GoToMeeting with HD Faces, the powerfully simple way to meet and collaborate online. With GoToMeeting by Citrix, it just takes a click to share your screen and work on documents in real time. And just turn on your webcam to make your online meeting an HD video conference. See each other face to face. It's like meeting in person. Easily launch or join a meeting from wherever you are, whenever you need to, using your computer, smartphone, or a tablet. You can even present from your iPad. I love GoToMeeting. We use it at my office all the time, and you should be using it too. Try GoToMeeting free for 30 days. For this special offer, visit GoToMeeting.com, click on the Try It Free button, and use the promo code PODCAST. Remember, use the promo code PODCAST. GoToMeeting. Meeting is believing. Okay, in the first part of the show, I mentioned using iRedmail on Ubuntu to set up your own email server so you can get off the free email offered by Google, Yahoo, and Microsoft, or any other third party that will sell your information to marketers or just willy-nilly hand it over to the government without a warrant. So you'll need to have a few things before we get started. First, you'll need a server. I set mine up on linode.com, which is a hosted VPS provider. You can try hosting it at home, but most internet providers block the ports necessary to run an email server on a home internet connection. Usually you'll have to upgrade to a business internet connection to serve email, which is way more expensive than just renting a VPS for $10 or $20 a month. On your server, you need to be able to install Ubuntu Linux or use an Ubuntu VPS. Finally, you'll need to own your own domain name and manage your own DNS. More on that in a minute. So once you have your server, just do a plain install of Ubuntu without any other applications, except maybe SSH. The install script for iRedmail will install everything you need. Next, make sure your server has a fully qualified domain name in slash etc slash hosts. Download iRedmail using wget, then extract the package. Change into the iRedmail directory and run the install script by running the command below. Let the script run and after a while a wizard will pop up asking you some questions. When you get to the screen asking if you want to use OpenLDAP, MySQL, or PostGRE SQL, pick whatever you want. I personally chose MySQL because I'm more familiar with it. 
When you are done with the wizard, type Y to proceed with the install and sit back. When it's done, it'll ask if you want to use their firewall. I chose no because I already had IP table set up on my VPS. You can do whatever you want. After you make your choice, just reboot your server and it's ready to go. Now you'll need to set up some DNS records. First you need to configure an A record pointing to the public IP of your mail server. And you'll also need to configure an MX record pointing to your mail server. Without the last one, you'll not be able to receive email. Now you should be able to log into the user and domain management interface by browsing to HTTPS your server name slash ired admin. And you can access your webmail by browsing to HTTPS, your server name slash mail. By default, the setup uses self-signed SSL certificates, so you'll need to either purchase a third-party certificate or get a free one from startssl.com. Once it's all set up, you need to make sure that you open ports 80 and 443 to access the web interfaces remotely. Port 25 for SMTP, port 587 for SMTPS, and 993 for IMAPS, and port 995 for POP3S. Now the free version of iRedmail has a spam filter using Spam Assassin, ClimAV, and Amaviz. However, if you want to easily manage it, you'll need to upgrade to iRedmail Pro, or you can install an Amaviz manager like Maya MailGuard. Here's a screenshot of my new Big Brother free email. I personally did some more things to lock it down by upgrading from SSL to new TLS and encrypting my mail store directory. But hey, I'm paranoid. That's all I have this week. If you have any questions, you should check out the iRedmail wiki at the link below. Or you can hit me up in the comments or sound off on our Facebook page. Normally, I would tell you to like, fave, subscribe, but since this is the last episode, I'll skip that. Just be sure to check back on my tech blog at bowerpower.net and my political blog at mainwash.com. Catch you later. Tech Chop is a proud member of the Tech Podcast Network. TechPodcast.com. If it's tech, it's here.